Hey guys, today I'm back with my bi-monthly, I'm not sure if that's the right word, or every two monthly book haul that I've been doing. So I did one for November and December, January, no that's not right, I did one for November, one for December and January, and one now for February and March. So my mission at the moment as part of like being less consumerist I guess, being more environmentally friendly in 2017 is that I'm not going to be buying any brand new books. All of the books that I buy this year are going to be from charity shops or from Depop or from Amazon, anything that's second hand. So, so I was really intrigued by this, I cannot wait to read it and John Green who, if you don't know who he is, he wrote The Fault in Our Stars and Paper Towns which have both been now made in some movies and he says just read it. <laughs> Next up is something completely different but something that I've been meaning to read for so many years and it's The Kite Run Runner by Khaled Hassini, if I pronounce that wrong I'm really sorry, um, and it's the author of A Thousand Splendid Sons. This was something that when I was at school um, and I first wanted to read I was told I was actually too young to read it um, because of like what it contains so it's something that's always intrigued me and I finally picked it up and even though it's my favourite thing to go into a charity shop and find a brand new book um, which obviously hasn't been read because there's nothing wrong with the spine. So the blurb says Afghanistan 1975 12 year old Amir is desperate to win the local kite fighting tournament and his local friend Hassan promises to help him but neither of the boys can foresee what will happen to Hassan that afternoon an event that is to shatter their lives after the Russians invade and the family is forced to flee to America Amir realises that one day he must return to Afghanistan under Taliban rule to find the one thing that his new world cannot grant him redemption but as I said I've been wanting to read this for so long and I'm prepared for it to kind of break my heart a little bit. And then we have again something completely different, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. So we all know the song about Breakfast at Tiffany's, we've all heard about it, we've all heard about the film with Audrey Hepburn in who's on the cover and it's just become such a part of like I don't know, I guess American culture, but it's kind of seeped into British culture as well that I really wanted to read it. So the blurb says, it's New York in the 1940s where the martinis flow from cocktail hour till breakfast at Tiffany's and nice girls don't, except of course, Holly go lightly. Pursued by mafia gangsters and playboy millionaires, Holly is a fragile eyeful of tawny hair and a turned up nose a heartbreaker, a perplexer, a traveller, a tease. She is irre irrepressibly top banana in the shock department and one of the shining flowers of American fiction. And now we've got a more modern book. It's called The Secret by Katerina Diamond and the front just says everything you think you know is a lie. So I've been kind of obsessed with thrillers over the last year after never having really read them before or been into them at all and obviously you can tell by the cover and the name that this is going to be a bit of a thriller. So it says, can you keep a secret? When Bridget Reed wakes up in a locked room, terrifying memories come flooding back of blood, pain and desperate fear. Her captor knows things she's never told anyone. How can she escape someone who knows all of her secrets? As DS Imogen Grey and DS Adrian Miles search for Bridget, they uncover a horrifying web of abuse, betrayal and murder right under their noses in Exeter. And as the past comes back to haunt her, Grey must confront her own demons because she knows that it can be those closest to us who hurt us the most. So, and as well, I love, I've kind of started to get into crime fiction, which is obviously what this is, so that's quite exciting. Then next up is The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. I'm again not sure if I've pronounced that right, but basically I've been looking into the list of a thousand and one books you should read before you die and his name or her name, I'm not really sure, has cropped up so many times that I just feel 
as though I need to read some of their books. And the blurb says, the year is 1327. Brother William of Baskerville arrives at a wealthy Italian abbey on theological business. When his delicate mission is overshadowed by seven bizarre deaths, Brother William de turns detective. He collects evidence, deciphers secret symbols and coded manuscripts, and digs into the eerie labyrinth of the abbey, where extraordinary things are happening under the cover of night. A spectacular, popular and critical success the Name of the Rose is not only a narrative of a murder investigation, but an astonishing chronicle of the Middle Ages. And I think the cover's really pretty as well. <laughs> and next up is another one where the author Brett Easton Ellis um, has popped up on the 1001 books that you're meant to read uh, numerous times. So I bought his book called The Rules of Attraction and it says um, Brett Easton Ellis shot to fame with his first novel, Less Than Zero, written when he was 20 years old. The Rules of Attraction is his second, a compelling and controversial tale of student sex and romantic entanglements on a New England college campus. Lauren, who changes her course subject every time she changes her sleeping partner, is the centre of a curious love triangle which involves the shrewd and passionate bisexual Paul and Sean, whose ambivalence and cynicism conceal, even from himself, his own romantic yearnings. Through each of the characters' voices, Ellis presents a kaleidoscopic view of clashing expectations and frustrations, of the dreams and tumultuous desires of youth. The rules of attraction paints a poignant and sometimes hilarious picture of the couplings and capitulations, the dramas and downfalls of American college life in the 1980s. So, I'm really excited to see how he portrays a bisexual man in the 1980s um, and I'm a bit worried about how bad it's going to be, I don't know, but yeah, I'm quite excited to read what was obviously quite a kind of forward-thinking book of its time. Now we have another book that I've wanted to read since I was in sixth form, so that was five years ago now. Um, <laughs> And it's Room by Emma Donoghue. This was recommended to me, I assume when it first came out really, um, a couple of times and I just never got round to picking it up, I never got round to reading it and when it popped up in the local charity shop I could not resist. So it says, Jack is five, he lives in a single locked room with his ma and that is the only blurb that there is, unless there is, oh no. It's one of those ones where the blurb is on the front page. Oh. Oh. And the first page is really sticky. It's Jack's birthday and he's excited about turning five. He lives with his ma in room, which has a locked door and a skylight and measures 11 feet by 11 feet. He loves watching TV and the cartoon characters he calls friends, but he knows that nothing he sees on screen is truly real. Only him, Ma and the things in room, until the day Ma admits that there's a world outside. Dot, dot, dot. So, room, every time they mention it, is capitalised and I'm, yeah, I've been wanting to read this for so long so I'm quite hyped to see if it lives up to all the reviews that people gave me. And then, the last few that I got are actually young adult books because I've read a couple recently that I bought last year from the Zoella Book Club and I just really really wanted to kind of, I realised how much I loved young adult books and how much I wanted to get back into them. So this is Shiver by Maggie Steifwater, again not sure if I pronounced that right. So it says, the pack circled around me, tongues and teeth and growls. When a local boy is killed by wolves, Grace's small town becomes a place of fear and suspicion, but Grace can't help being fascinated by the pack, and by one yellow-eyed wolf in particular. There's something about him, something almost human. Then she meets a yellow-eyed boy whose familiarity takes her breath away. So this is kind of going to be a slightly gothic, um, not necessarily horror, but more like creepy book, and I'm really excited to see how they talk about werewolves in it. 
And then again, this is, next up is All Fall Down, A Story of Survival by Sally Nichols. And she's the author of Waves to Live Forever, which I bought and have read quite a few years ago now, but it made me cry. It was so heartbreaking. And I remember I'm really, really enjoying it. So I know I'm probably gonna like this. So it says, a deadly contagion rage races through England. Isabel and her family have nowhere to run from a disease that has killed half of Europe. When the world she knows and loves ends forever, her only weapon is courage. The Black Death of 1349 was the deadliest plague in human history. All Fall Down is a powerful and inspiring story about survival in the face of real life horror. So, I love history. I almost, very almost, took it as my degree, but I did it right up until A level, and especially kind of medievalish history is something that I'm really, really into. So, I'm excited to see how they talk about the Black Death. And then, last but not least, I know we're finally there, is Every Day by David Lefaithan. Again, I don't know how that's pronounced. Um, and I know he's written a book in conjunction with John Green. I can't quite remember which book it is that he wrote with him, um, but I know it's quite popular. So it says, Every day I am someone else. I am myself. I know I am myself but I am also someone else. It has always been like this. Each morning, A wakes up in a different body. There's never any warning about who it will be, but A is used to that. Never get too attached. Avoid being noticed. Do not interfere. And that's fine. Until A wakes up in the body of Justin and meets Justin's girlfriend, Rhiannon. From that moment, the rules by which A has been living no longer apply because finally A has found someone he wants to be with every day. And that, <laughs> that has already intrigued me so much. I wanna see why he loves Rhiannon, what's going on with him switching bodies every day. And that is a good blurb. So again, this is another young adult novel. So. And that is everything. Um, I love, love, love filming these book hauls and kind of sharing a complete like range of different books with you. Um, and hopefully, like if you like the sound of them, you might go out and pick some up. I don't know, but I'm really, really getting back into reading and doing my little book hauls and I love it. So if you liked it too, please, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos and I will see you soon. Bye.